Welcome to Traders Corner. Joining me as always is Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julieta. Garth, there was a, a brief moment of hope uh, that we had that the S&P 500 would collapse in a heap. Your option structure would come into the money and all would be well come this features close out, but it is not to be. That's correct. We didn't even need it to collapse in a heap. We just needed it to move lower by one or two percent uh, when we was speaking last week or, or two weeks ago. Um, the chart of the S&P 500 is up on the screen at the moment. And look, there's no doubting that this is a strong index. I mean, you can see it's quite clear there's a rising lows and rising highs. It's been in a very solid upward trend uh, since Donald Trump won the US election mm -hmm. actually in November last year. There hasn't been more than a 3% pullback in the index that entire time, which is unprecedented. So it's a very strong market, very, very shallow pullbacks. Um, I have continued to put in these occasional put spread structures looking for a bit of a retracement. And I mean, I'm not even looking for a big retracement. I was looking, w when we did this one, the strike level here is 24.30 on the S&P 500, which when we did it in June, looked fairly feasible. Yeah. Um, and, and it didn't look as if we were asking for a lot to the for the market to move lower. It would have been about a 5% move lower, which would have put us well into our sweet spot. And ordinarily, in any other normal year, you get that most of the time. You do get a 5 or even a 10% pullback uh, most years. This year has just been very, very different. Mm -hmm. This market has been incredibly strong. And so, yes, we sit now in a situation where this put spread option structure of, us, of ours, which is uh, on the right hand side of the page, the, the payoff is illustrated there. This thing expires on Friday this week, on the 15th of September. And by all accounts, it's looking extremely unlikely that we'll make any money out of this unless something catastrophic happens between now and Friday. Mm -hmm. um, technically, the way it's looking at the moment actually looks quite strong. You can see there's an upward sloping channel over there, which is quite clearly evident by those two horizontal uh, parallel lines that I've drawn in there. And if, if this is to belie be believed, the fact that the, the S&P 500 has now moved up beyond 2480, then it suggests to me that we're probably going up to 2500 and, and the top of that channel comes in at about 2520. So it looks as if we could quite possibly go there and then maybe we see a little bit of a reset from that level. So unfortunately, it, it does look as if we're going to lose our $240 option premium here, which we always knew was one of the possibilities with this trade anyway. Yeah, and at least the loss is quantified, as you say. Yeah. Garth, what about the local market? Because that's been quite interesting, um, especially in the last couple of days, because you'd taken sort of a short position mm. um, and that actually has worked out for mm. you. So maybe uh, yes. talk us through what's been happening. That's right. We'll take a look at the short position on the Ormi future where we made some money um, after this. We're just quickly going to look at the daily chart of the top 40 future here. And what's evident here is that the, this 46, uh, 48,600 level on the top 40 futures held quite comfortably last week. And we've seen the market moving up off that level since then. And has now begun to break out above this shorter term downtrend over there that you can see I'm pointing out at the moment. Now, we're bumping up against 50,000 on the top 40 future today, which is obviously a very big round figure. And and that's, that round figure has been sticky on a number of occasions over the last month or so. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens at 50,000 again this time. If the market were to reverse down quite convincingly or 50,000, then it's possible we could start to see the formation of the right shoulder of a head and shoulders pattern there. But it's far too early to speculate mm -hmm. on that right now. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But here again, we also have one of these put spread option structures on. And this one was entered quite some time back. And we were looking at that point for a move below 48,000 and into this area around 46,000. Um, it did actually happen back in June. But yeah. unfortunately, you can't take profits on these things because of the way options pricing works and all the different variances in, in options pricing. We kind of leave these things to run out until expiry. And the way it's looking at the moment, it's looking unlikely that it will expire in the money. Keep in mind, our futures close out locally is on the 21st of September. That's not this week. It's next week, mm. Thursday. Um, it's probably not likely, that unless something catastrophic happens, it's unlikely that we're going to make money on this structure. So again, here, most likely we're going to lose our premium of 2,300 Rand. Not the end of the world. And do keep in mind, we've entered another structure for the December quarter, which we spoke about on last week's show. And I'll continue to update that week after week as once this one has expired. Yeah, but okay. that one works for us below 49,500 into the fourth quarter of the year. OK, so that's the option structure. But then, you know, you have traded in and around it. Um, yeah. And so maybe talking us to the trade, the position that you took when it was a two, three weeks ago? Yes, it was about yeah, about uh, two weeks ago. We did a trade on the all me. So 
This is now a chart of the, of the top 40 hourly futures now. So remember that one we looked at previously now was a daily chart mm -hmm. here. Every candlestick pattern here represents one hour worth of trading activity. And what we identified back then was that there was this head and shoulders top pattern which gapped through the neckline, uh, which was a, a valid break, and that caused me to want to go short on this market for a pullback. And at that stage, I suggested that there was a likelihood that we could go down and fill this gap in the chart, which is at about 49,000. Um, it has finally got there. So you know, we, we went short three all me futures at a price of 49,725. Stop loss was 50,100. Now that stop loss was briefly flirted with, mm. but we didn't stop it out. And then the target was 49,000. Now you can see over the past week or so, it got to that 49,000 target level. It closed the gap that I was looking for there, and we've taken profits on this trade. So in the end, we make 2,160 Rand when we include all costs here. So not a bad little trade all, I all in all. And fortunately, this trade closed out just in time before the market started to take off again. Yeah, because, uh, well, indeed, so um, quick, quick off the mark there. Yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting to see, I guess, what um, the market does for the, uh, the, you know, the last quarter of the year. It certainly will. We're obviously going into middle of September now and then October, which seasonally actually is a weak time of the year. I mean, September actually is historically the worst month of the year for mm. the markets. You wouldn't think so, looking at the way they're performing at the moment. But, you know, that's, that's it. The markets don't always conform exactly to history. And it doesn't appear that that's the case this year, for not for now anyway. Mm. Okay, Garth. So that uh, leads us up to this week's trade, which is a position in PSG Group. Yes, that's right. So PSG Group, obviously a big investment holding company. It holds uh, big stakes in the likes of Capitec, Zeda, Kuro, um, PSG Consult, and a variety of other businesses as well. Incredibly successful business founded by Yanni Moton and his... Uh, Burra Buffett status is, is legendary in South Africa. Now this, the holding company PSG Group here uh, has pulled back quite sharply over the last two weeks or so and it's got me interested. If you have a look over the last year or more than the last year there's an upward trend which is quite clearly evident over there. You can see how that trend line joins all the lows um, since July of last year and it's every time it's pulled back to that trend line it seems to have found support. Also what's been notable over the past uh, year, year to date is how the 200 day moving average has also provided support. You can see this is the 200-day moving average, which is that light green line there. Kind of corresponds quite neatly with the upward trend, actually. But each time the market, uh, each time the stock, rather, has pulled back to that 200-day moving average, it does appear that the buyers have come in and they've pushed the price up off the lower levels. Now, it's done that again over the last week. You can see the uptrend and the 200-day moving average both coincided around about 240 Rand over here. And there's quite a strong support area there. And so far, it does appear as if if there's been some buying evidence at that level. I think part of the reason why we've seen this share price coming under pressure over the last two weeks is has got a lot to do with the fact that Kuro's share price has come under pressure and also Zeda and Pioneer Foods, which are intertwined, they've also come under pressure. All the food producer stocks generally yeah. have come under a lot of pressure. So I think those two actually have weighed on PSG to quite a large extent. But those are not the biggest assets within the PSG stable. The biggest asset actually is, is Capitec. Um, and PSG Consult is, is, is also n not the biggest, but it's big. Uh, it's I think PSG Consult makes up about 13% of the sum of the parts valuation. So my sense is that the weakness that we've seen in the PSG Group holding company share price here is possibly a little bit overdone. And we can look for a potential bounce off the support line here that I'm talking about. And, and as a consequence of that, that's what we've done this week. I just want to look, zoom in here. Uh, on the more recent trading action, this is three months worth of trade in uh, in PSG Group. Here you can see the 200 day moving average more clearly, that's that green line at the bottom. You can see how at 240 Rand there was a reversal up off that level on Friday last week. So we've decided to go long. Uh, I've done this trade today for our portfolio being Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Gone long at 242 Rand and 15 cents. Stop loss is 237 Rand which would mean it needs to take out the low of that reversal from last week. And then I'm looking for a move, a rally back up to the underside of the 50-day moving average there, which is at about 255 rand. So that that's the trade that we've done for this week. So a bit of a reversal, but are are you to some extent preempting preempting this? I mean, you seem to have gotten 
just as the turn may be happening? Well, the reversal already happened, and that, that candle that we see right there on Friday at the, at the 200 day moving average, we've, there's a name for that, it's called a piercing line in, um, in Japanese candlestick terminology. They've got interesting names <laughs> for these candles, there's lots of other funny ones. But, um, but that is a reversal, and, okay. and that to me indicates that buyers have been evident at the 200 day moving average. And uh, whilst that is the case, I'm happy to go long with a stop loss below the lowest point of that reversal. Okay, so talk us through the mechanics of that trade, Garth. All right, so we've gone long at 242 Rand and 15 cents. The stop loss is 237 Rand. Risk per share, therefore, is 5 Rand and 15 cents. I'm risking 1.5% of our capital on this trade. So we've got about 108,000 Rand in our South African account at the moment. So if 1.5% of that translates into 1,620 Rand. So I take our capital risk, 1,620 Rand, divide that by 5 Rand and 15 cents. That's our risk per share. And it means that we can trade 315 CFDs in this case. So that's how many CFDs I've bought for the portfolio this week. My target is 255 Rand, and that therefore means that my risk to reward ratio is one to two and a half. I mean, Garth, it's an interesting, um, you know, investment holding companies can be quite um, sluggish sometimes because you do have kind of warring aspects um, within the portfolio, if you like. And you talked about um, uh, Kuro and Zeda being the, the drags yeah. on on, cap, um, on PSG. Mm. Um, I, I sort of wonder um, what other factors you might be looking for for a bit of a bounce higher other than just technical factors that you've set out um, here on the chart. Well, often what you look at with an investment holding company is what is the discount to the sum of the parts valuation. That's where you take all the bits and pieces that make up the asset and then add it together and say, right, what's the total valuation of all those constituent assets? and how does that relate to the share price of the holding company. Typically a holding company does trade at a discount to the sum of the parts and you'll notice it with all of them like um, the likes of a Abrate, um, a Remgro, a PSG Group and others. They all trade at a discount to the sum of the parts. Interestingly PSG Group over the last year has actually gone at times it's become uh, a situation where it's traded at a premium mm -hmm. to the sum of the parts, which, which is very unusual for an investment holding company. At the moment, that discount is about 6% uh, relative to the sum of the parts valuation. So it's not uh, outrageously cheap, but if you take it into the consideration of where it's been and, and into the consideration that at times this PSG group has actually traded at a premium to its sum of the parts valuation, strangely, it's not... Um, it's not terrible, and we. But but mainly, what's driving me here is the technical factors yeah. that are at play. Okay, so um, and one and a half percent of the portfolio. I guess uh, you've been fairly active, not taking a two percent position, which is the maximum. Yes, not going into our f uh, into the full size position. I, I guess it's just we've got other trades on at the moment. Um, not so much in our South African portfolio actually, because we've just got our option structures there. We've got some stuff on the offshore portfolio. Um, I guess just leaving a bit of uh, ammo. But of a bit of dry powder to do some other yeah. buying if we see opportunities. Okay, well let's look at those portfolios, the, the two of them, the South African and um, the overseas. Yeah, so our South African portfolio has perked up a little bit this week thanks to the gains that we made on that all me short. Um, where we've taken profits there. And then you can see our two put spread option structures. We've still got the one which runs out to the 21st of September here, and then the December Aussie put spread as well, which we'll continue to monitor throughout the fourth quarter of the year. And now we've gone into the PSG group this week. So there we're sitting with just over 108,000 Rand in the South African portfolio, which means we're up 8.3% for the year to date. And then our offshore portfolio is still lagging. Unfortunately, we've got, again, a put spread structure on the S&P 500 here, where it looks all altogether likely that we're gonna lose mm -hmm. our $240 premium at the end of this week. And then Unilever, we are still up on that trade, but it's come off a little bit since last week's show. We're up 165 pounds there. So all in all, our, our pound account is still down about 5% for the year to date and really struggling. Yeah. And then just to end off with um, a, a reminder that you can get a weekly alert. Yes, you can. If you go to traderscorner.co.za, you can go to the middle of the page and you'll see there's a link there for a free weekly email. Click on that, register your details. It's really quick and simple. It'll take you about 30 seconds. And then we'll send you an email every Tuesday afternoon detailing what comes up on the show each week for that week. Great. Goss, we'll leave it there. Thanks as always for joining us. Garth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner.